Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to KMI Community Connect. Uh, we are um, reconnecting again uh, to discuss a very important topic as a continuum of where we left last time. Um, we talked about the quality and quantity of fat which is adiposity and adiposipathy and we also talked about four different variables that could come out of it and how we should be very careful not to get carried away with uh, just numbers uh, looking at everything as a number and uh, also bring in the concept of quality. So, today I am actually going to be uh, delving a little bit more uh, deeper into this subject, but uh, my purpose of talking about this specific point today is uh, uh, basically uh, meant for two particular reasons. Uh, what I am going to talk about today has both uh, uh, practical significance and also clinical significance. So, purely from a practical significance first, um, I want to bring in this concept of uh, uh, energy in the body because everything that we are going to consume is in the form of energy. So, the body actually uh, senses energy and then that energy is nothing but the nutrients that we are sensing from the environment and that nutrient sensing leads to the energy that is ingested, digested which we call as energy processing and then it is absorbed in other words and then that the whole process is basically leading to what is called as regulation of energy system whether there is energy that has to be used after it uh, or it can be stored. So, how does this uh, happen? So, just like how the body is uh, sensing um, in other words what is the real nutrient sensor because energy is nutrition what is the nutrient sensor uh, is the pathway that is getting stimulated or that is getting activated is this primary principal hormone called insulin when insulin is for most of you because of the nature of its action maybe some of you think that insulin is basically meant to decrease the glucose because of the by nature of its action uh, for some of you uh, you know that it regulates the blood sugar for some of you it may just be a medication to control your sugar but insulin is the most principal primary nutrient sensing organ which has various functions it has hundreds of functions it is almost uh, like uh, the stem of the the tree it is uh, you can call it like if you follow the american football it's like a quarterback it does all different functions and lots of other hormones are actually acting either directly with it or indirectly uh, through various other uh, pathways so having said that basically we know that insulin is a hormone a hormone is simply uh, a protein molecule and it is produced by various glands and insulin is one of the hormones that is produced by uh, a gland that is just below and behind your stomach called pancreas and once it is produced like every other hormone it goes into various uh, parts of the body through the bloodstream and exerts its actions which are very complex however the most important point that i'm going to talk about when i said practical standpoint for you guys is insulin basically does the nutrient and energy sensing like how I said the body senses it is it is sensing the nutrient and energy then it is partitioning into various compartments when I say partitioning it is nothing but storage. So, it actually stores and the storage is happening in various organs and primarily um, I say primarily because 98 percent of that is stored as fat. I will talk about how it is stored, uh, the rest of it how it is stored in a different uh, um, presentation. And then, so basically if you think about insulin hormone is primarily a fat storage hormone. Now, why is this uh, important or how is this important for us? So, we uh, in clinical practice now coming from a practical standpoint to clinical practice we see um, various clinical presentations because of uh, based on the insulin hormone action so most of the time when we see body types i'm going to be talking about body types and then base it on the insulin hormone um, so the body types 
uh, most of us are trying to uh, make an assessment of the he metabolic health of a person whether if he is thin he is healthy or if he is uh, heavy he is unhealthy um, but instead of getting entrenched in this uh, dogma um, uh, what and then not keeping ourselves uh, open to uh, this kind of confirmation bias i am going to talk about uh, two different aspects of the insulin so here we have a perfectly acting normal insulin in terms of quantity and quality however when you talk about uh, in a different aspect in terms of quality uh, insulin can be sensitive or insulin can be resistant what does it mean by sensitive and resistant that means uh, the action of insulin on the tissues of the body if it is responsive if the tissues are responsive to its action then it is called insulin sensitive whereas all the tissues that are not responding properly then that is called as insulin resistant so based on this uh, insulin sensitivity and insulin resistant i am now going to um, uh, classify or, or give an illustration clinical illustration about how uh, the body types are divided these are the extreme variations so you have a slim and a healthy who is the healthy is represented here by green uh, who is insulin sensitive the top two are the insulin sensitive the skinny and healthy person this person is the one who is metabolically healthy metabolically flexible he pretty much uh, uh, rarely gets uh, sick and uh, everybody wants to be like this then at the other end of the spectrum while you are insulin sensitive we have a person who is um, can get very heavy and obese but this is a very interesting class where metabolically they are healthy how are they metabolically healthy because they pack a lot of weight under the skin and they expand but they don't have much visceral fat so these are the people mostly you see a um, uh, more women in this category and also um, there are other reasons it's not uh, just about uh, insulin but uh, in terms of sensitivity their insulin is very sensitive that is one of the reason why the more sensitive your insulin is the more fat you put away and these people carry a lot of fat under their skin so they are metabolically healthy Uh, but however they are obese the only problems they could have is mostly mechanical issues if at all the now coming down to the insulin resistant type these are the the skinny people and uh, these are the skinny fat people so some of these people this is a very interesting class as we think that you know the skinny people they by they are the most metabolically unhealthy since this energy that the glucose and all the lipids and all it's a backflow into the system they cannot hold much fat and these are the people who are getting sick with diabetes cardiac disease and various other complications so these are also called as thin outside and fat inside this is a very interesting class the other category which is the insulin resistant uh, type is the typical category that we see which is the obese and unhealthy the the diabetic uh, category so these are the people who have all the complications Uh, being obese which is what uh, we see predominantly now um so when you look at the extremes of uh, of this you could see that uh, the slim and healthy here just by appearance and how when you look at their metabolism the eyes don't lie and metabolically also the body doesn't lie and then so that's one aspect of it then here at the other end of the spectrum they are obese and unhealthy so the eyes don't lie and metabolically the body doesn't lie uh now here you see the eye lies because they are uh, uh, actually um, obese at the same time metabolically they are healthy so the body also lies and then here we have the skinny fat the toffee the eye lies at the same time the body also lies because we expect them to be healthy and here when we come at the two extreme presentations of this uh, overweight and obese people uh, both on the sensitive and resistant side um i want to give an illustration on the slide that i'm going to show you uh, these are the people who actually are uh, uh 
um, carrying on the left you can see that uh, they carry a lot of uh, fat uh, under their skin and they are uh, obese but metabolically healthy and on the right you can see the typical beer belly where there is uh, tons of uh, uh, visceral fat and metabolically unhealthy. So the resistant types are mostly because the insulin is uh, not working it is a qualitative defect and the quality is basically you can think that the lock is not uh, the, the, the key is not fitting into the lock on the cell for its action. So um, having said all this you can understand that mostly the, the various body types represented from metabolic health perspective primarily everything we have shown it from an insulin perspective. So like we talked about adiposity is hormonal and adiposopathy which is a qualitative defect is also hormonal and insulin is the primary hormone uh, that is causing uh, most of the dysfunction that we talked about uh, today. So uh, to summarize this I am actually uh, going to be talking uh, a lot of in between spectrums uh, we fall a, lo um, a lot of us fall into various spectrums of in between uh, categories here and here for both from a sensitive as well as resistant perspective. Uh, this is a wide spectrum I have only categorized them from the extremes. So we see a lot of uh, various clinical presentations in between in these categories that we are going to be talking more in detail in our next presentation um, about uh, the metabolic dysfunction and insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance causing various uh, metabolic disorders including obesity. Uh, thank you for your time and I am looking forward to talk to you uh, very soon in my next presentation.